Wait, 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 wait. You guys want to sit down? <laughs> no, we're, I mean, we're good. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be the reason you get wobble leg or anything. <laughs> you will not be the reason. <laughs> Bones! Immortal bones. I can do that, or I can stop. That way I know I'm not dead. I'm not dead yet. It's about being afraid of the, not being afraid of the dark. It's about due diligence. It's about the power of one life. It's about how things came to be this way. For me. It's about your hopes, your dreams, your understanding of it all. <coughs> write down your bones, write down your immortal bones, or art your immortal bones. I just realized that tonight. Let me tell you a story. <coughs> now when I was just a young boy, my grandfather, who hadn't said three words to me in my nine years of life, he sat me down. He looked at me right in the eye. Big brown chair, big mountain of a man, my grandfather. I was nine years old. He says, when you die and go up to the pearly gates of heaven, they're going to ask you one question. And how you answer that question will determine whether you spend the everlasting and in glory, or in the burning torment of hell. <laughs> the man had my attention. <laughs> he said, when you die, they're going to ask you one question, and that question is, how much service did you do your fellow man? Writing, words, art, it's all about three things, basically. Expected outcome, that grandfather, I'm sure, three words to me in my young nine years, his expected outcome was that this was going to be a life-changing, life-altering, high-impact moment in my life. Content. Well, I'm nine years old. It was one year earlier that I blew the lid off of Santa Claus and the boogeyman <laughs> under my bed. So this kind of sounded like it was the same kind of parental crowd control that I'd already figured out. I'm nine years old, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> and he says, no, not only expected outcome and contact and, and, and uh, expected outcome, content, but also timing. His timing was off just a little bit. You see, six, maybe four or five months earlier, I was sitting in my warm, tepid, dirty bathtub <laughs> with my soap that floated, my boat, and I was bored. <laughs> and still stinking. <laughs> So, I found my dick. <laughs> it's all about due diligence now. And, and, and I did my due diligence on my dick. And bam! A life-changing, life-altering, high-impact moment. And so, you know, I'm thinking back to Grandpa's words. I'm not really nervous. In thinking back to Grandpa's <laughs> words, it was, it was being of service to my fellow man. And I'm a Libra, so, you know, I don't know, kind of a balanced kind of guy. And my dick. <laughs> and then I was burning hell, everlasting glory. <laughs> I knew where I was going to do my due diligence for the next 51 years. <laughs> But about two years ago, things changed in my life, and I started to think, you know, I'll write a book. And Luke 
there gave me a book called Write Down the Bones. Just whatever comes into your head, your hopes, your dreams, your understanding of it all, just write it down. About one or two months into that process, I started thinking about something else, and it was, it was the power of one life. It's, it's, I saw her name over there, little Anne Frank, sitting in a room this size writing down her hopes and her dreams and her understanding of it all. She didn't know she was going to be one of the most beloved authors of our time. She was just writing down her immortal bones. And it's the Apostle Paul sitting in a mammotine dungeon. They're about to cut off his head. And he says, bring me my pen. Bring me my papers. My fellow man has abandoned me. And this tomorrow morning, as a matter of fact, when the sun rises in the east, east, <laughs> when the sun rises in the east and travels across my planet, it will cast shadows over steeples and churches preaching and teaching the gospel of Paul. Two thousand years! after he got his melon locked off. <laughs> the power of one life. So I write down my bones. As that sun <laughs> is traveling across my planet, it's also sh casting shadows on monoliths of business, and houses, and huts, and seven billion people with their own hopes and dreams, with their own understanding of it all. So I did my due diligence. And I figured out out of seven billion people that can do this, that ain't dead, out of seven billion people, I give a shit about 19 of them. <laughs> Plus or minus five, depending on what kind of day I'm in. <laughs> 19, so I started writing down my bones for the, my 19. And who's to say, 40 years down the road, my son Luke's got a daughter named Luella, Luella or Luella. <laughs> and when she has children, maybe they'll come up to old man Luke there and say, Grandpappy, I love you. I love you because you're my grandfather. What, what was your dad all about? He can hand her this, one of those little children. Say, so this is this is from my daddy. <laughs> Says he wrote down his hopes and his dreams and his understanding of it all for you. Sal, so you'll probably get into it a little bit and you'll realize. The guy didn't have a fucking clue. <laughs> but, I'll tell you this much. He wrote down his immortal bones. He wrote them down for you. And, when he died, he was not afraid of the dark. And he just might, he just might, have been of service to his fellow man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah.